the convenience store of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. A handoff on the second and short. Dom Williams gets a couple and he has the first down. Out of the gun. Time to throw. Hits McShane. No, that was Quan Hampton. There's our impact player for the first down. Players for the Panthers would be out. McIlvain with the screen out to McShane. Has some space and out past midfield. Just short of the first down, it'll be second and two now. This offense is doing, and, and, and uh, uh, Panthers are executing well. On third down, McIlvain hits his tight end, Fortenberry, over the middle, crossing the field for the first down to the 26. Well, so that's got to be a matchup that you'd love to see when you're McIlvain. Out in space now, and he's got some space to run. The athleticism of Will McIlvain. Panthers on this third down play in the red zone. McIlvain flushed out. and just gets rid of it. No Panthers in the area. Moore with a big leg, just missed a 53-yarder last week, was two for three, and he drills that one through the upright, so Northern Iowa does cash in for three. It might be keeping him away from the start. Craycraft out of the gun, pocket collapsing, almost got away from the pressure, but Cannon Butler, the freshman defensive end, gets in there for the sack. No, that's Christian Boyd, the sophomore D-tackle up the middle. Hoosman in the backfield with McIlvain. Hoosman picks up the blitz nicely, and McIlvain flushed out to the right. Going downfield, overthrown. Trying to find Dion McShane in double coverage down there. Situation today. Quickly gets rid of it to Christian Turner out in some space, and he is swallowed up by Spencer Cuvalier. We're on the short side of the field there near the line. McIlvain with some time to survey this time. Over the middle. Hits his man for the first down. That's Quan Hampton. McElvain to pass now. Hits McShane, and McShane has some space to turn up field all the way to the 50. Second and three after that, Hoosman carry. Hoosman again. A little bit less doing that time, but very close to the sticks. Still Hoosman. This time McIlvain keeps it off the mesh and he darts ahead past the 30 and he got the first down I believe on this big third down at the 24. They need five. McIlvain and he is forced to just get rid of it. They were trying to set up a screen to Hoosman and a bunch of Penguins broke through. 37 but for the second time Youngstown State tightens up in and around the red zone forces the Matthew Cook field goal attempt. He is two for two, but Youngstown has got to be happy with how this game has gone, only being down six. Opted out. McIlvain here with just over a minute to go in this half. Strikes Hampton over the middle, and Hampton's still on his feet, getting some blocking downfield from his fellow wide receivers. And there's the first really big explosion play of the game from either team. Big advantage of that timeout. Here we take a look at the setup. W nice patience there by McIlvain. And I saw this a ton last week in the second half. A Third and nine now. In the closing moments of this first half, McIlvain hitting his running back, Dom Williams, over the middle. Point as a player at UNI and now as a head coach. McIlvain, he wants Weston alone in the end zone and it's intercepted. Underthrown and picked off by Troy Jakubek. Weston was lined up all the way outside. You could see right from the break that he was going to go to the end zone and just an underthrown ball. And Jakubek. Catching the ball over your shoulder by Jakubek. Look at that concentration. They looks like a receiver on that. Beautiful. A little more of the, the read game look out of the backfield with Wade in there. And he slips that first tackle. Now he's got some space and a bit of a convoy before he's finally chased down by Bronte Wells. It went Craycraft so far in this game. Wade with the first drive of the second half. And another nice play with the legs by the quarterback Wade. Another first down, back-to-back -back first down carries. In their offense, they get, the, get field position right here. Let's see if they can come away with a score. Wade snaps off a quick completion to Benio. I think that we've seen more offense now starting the second half. Uh, from the Penguins we did in the whole first half. Wade completes to Benio once again. Plenty enough for the first down before being knocked out by Riley Van Watt. Stiff in their backs in the red zone here for the first time. 
Wade running out of time. Caught from behind and brought down. And UNI does find that extra gear. I think that was Caden Hotelling. Colton McFadden. Try and get Youngstown on the board wide left. Outside for both teams today. Really step up. Third down, firing a strike over the middle for the first down, hitting Sam Schnee. Uh, 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 enthusiasm that Coach Farley likes to have, talking about the, the, the most fun, one of, some of the most fun he's had at last night's, you know, had a touchdown catch last week, and I think he's got a great future. Usman off tackle to the right side, has some space on the second and long carry, all the way down inside the 25. McIlvain keeps it. He has some space. Knocked out of bounds at the three yard line. Williams, open hole right in for the touchdown. And the Panthers, the first to get in the end zone here today. They take the two score lead at the start of the fourth quarter. 6'3, 230. That's good size. Third and long. Wade in trouble. Can't find anybody downfield. Just forced to tuck it down and run for a few. Made something out of nothing. It's 20 years, and uh, you know that's what these young men need. They need a, uh, a consistent, strong leader like Mark Farley. Quan Hampton showing some wiggle to turn the corner. Shorter, they could run the ball, but somebody has got to continue to make a play here. Quick play action look. McIlvain out towards Weston. Connects with his All-American receiver. Pass the sticks down to the 15-yard line. And, and win this down right now, one down at a time. Williams off right tackle, met inside the five. And the Penguins rally to that tackle well. And it's defensively, because, you know, just playing conventional orthodox football is not working for you. Williams following his center right back up the middle from the one, in for the touchdown. And UNI makes it a three-score game. They break through for the second time in this quarter. Surveying the field. A strike to McShane behind the defense and a great catch under the goalposts to convert for two. And UNI makes it a 21-0 game. Take a look at the two-point conversion. Man, that you talk about a strike. Look at that. Only that is only where McShane can catch that ball. Uh or, or, or either four of the linemen got their first start last week. Uh the fifth lineman who was the, the rock. Dan Becker is not playing today, so they had another lineman getting his first start. So athleticism to lead this offense very effectively. Yep. Yeah, he's he's coming off, which was maybe a year or two ago. Weston was his go-to guy and uh, a security blanket, if you will. Uh, he's growing out of that, and I think that's what Coach Farley wants to see. And that does it for Mark Farley, the first coach in Valley history to reach 100 wins in his career, 100 league wins in his career and 